Welcome to the March 19 meeting of the Community Preservation Commission for Deerfield. Present is Tim Hilchey, Chairman. Uh, you want Rich to speak to identify? Moderator appointee. Ben Benson. Friedland, member. Ben Benson, member for the Historical Commission. Trevor Great. McDaniel, select board visitor. John Pachork, visitor. Rachel Blaine, I think I'm the moderator appointee. Select board. No. Select board appointee. Thank you. <laughs> Ryan. And Chris Harris. The applicant <laughs> representing Old Deerfield uh, Cemetery Association. Okay, um, so to get some technical business out of the way, um, any votes we take tonight, we have to do by roll call. So okay. if someone makes a motion, each of us has to state our name and state our position. And um, the meeting is gonna be recorded and presented to um, the town when, when we're done. So um, since, John's proposal is the one that everyone else is going to be interested in. If anyone else dials in, I propose that we start with the simpler ones. And um, I thought we would take up first um, the, uh, mon uh, <clears throat> the Dead of 1704 Monument. Um, we've had significant discussion about it, and I'm not sure whether we need to um, go through a lot of detail on it, but I'm gonna hit share screen and I'm gonna put a piece up so that people can see what the proposal is. Okay. And there Hello. is someone who's- uh, John Nove's here. Hi, John. Hello, John. Hello. And Chuck. So some people are, are calling in by phone, so- um, Okay. Read it a little bit, Tim, just so you know. Say that again. A couple of people, are, or at least one person, is only calling in by phone. Right. So you should probably read it as well as sharing your screen. Right. Okay. Okay. So can everybody who has video capability see the, the Dead of 1704 monument? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. So um, as I said, the CPC membership has discussed this um, both as a general concept. And then at the March 5th meeting, we had a detailed pres presentation by John. Um, there, the Deerfield Historical Commission is uh, requesting $2,854 um, to restore uh, the monument, essentially taking two courses of brick off, uh, lowering the monument, taking off lichen and other external damage, uh, and then um, sitting it properly. And there are matching funds in both uh, um, in-kind services, I guess. But John, why don't you speak to it? Uh, the matching fund, can people hear? Yes. 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 Oh, good. Uh, yeah, so the matching funds were the remainder of a gift from Deerfield Academy for work in the cemetery, and then also from an anonymous donor who specifically said she wanted the money used for the cemetery. And that was a gift that was given, I think, 15 years ago, before my time. Okay. So those are the two matches that will basically be, uh, I think it's, that they equal 48% of the project, and we're asking you folks for 52%. <clears throat> Does anyone on the board have any other questions for John? I have a question about maintenance. Um, my understanding is that the CPC funds, does not fund maintenance, but funds projects. Is that correct? That's my understanding. Yeah. So is there a, a plan for um, ongoing maintenance once this work is done? Um, yeah, the, the um, Historical Commission is acquiring the skills for keeping the stones clean, for removing lichen on a regular basis. And then the cemetery itself is maintained by the town. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. 
there any um, any other uh, member have any questions? Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, our guest, our guests attending the meeting, do you have any questions or comments? None for um, me too. Thanks. No, I'm good. Okay. Well, if um, that being the case, I'd entertain a motion to either approve or not recommend this at town meeting. I move that we recommend, I, Lily Dwight, <laughs> move that we recommend this at town meeting. Do I have a second? I uh, Ben Benson second. Um, all in favor, um, I will start Tim Hilchey, chairman, I'm in favor. But may I, may I interrupt? Yes. Uh, just so that it doesn't come back to haunt us, I'm not sure Ben, as a member of the Historical Commission, can second. Oh, okay. I retract can, my second. I guess, I, can, I, can I ask, uh, this is Trevor, could I ask uh, one question now that I'm just looking at a photo of it? Um, just so I can understand, I can see the lichen and the, and the damaged bricks and all. What was the aspect of the work again? You were going to remove the bricks and, and replace them, or...? Uh, no, so the, the stone itself is going to be lifted up. Yep, I see and that. And then the, yep. top t the, the top two courses, which are the ones that have fallen apart, are going to be removed. The yep. ones underneath are going to be strengthened. And then the stone put back on top. And by doing it that way, the angle of the mound becomes less steep and less subject to erosion. Okay, okay. So... Um, so you're just removing those two brick courses and just dropping and then them repoint and then repointing all the other ones all the other ones and I, can, I guess I can only see um, oh I see there's maybe four four rows of it total uh, but it actually goes about two feet into the ground oh it does I see okay yeah and it does and look like it's leaning quite a bit as well yeah yeah, so we dug a hole and looked all the way down, and the deeper ones are intact. Okay, I see. So it's just straightening up and clearing. Okay, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. It's just following up. Yep. Hey, can I get another second? Um, I'm happy to second it, Alan Swedland. Okay. Motion's been uh, made and seconded, and um, Tim Hilchey, Chairman, votes in favor. Lee Dwight votes in favor. Alan Swedland in favor. Chuck Shattuck in favor. Ray Rachel. Johnson in favor. Where did Rachel go? I don't know. She's, she's closed her video. You, you should be able to look at your participants, Tim, and see what's up with her. How do I do that? I, I, if you go to participants. Okay. Yeah, she's got, it shows her as having her, oh, there she is. Rachel, we need to hear your vote. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> did you hear, did you hear mine? Yes, Chuck, we heard oh, yours. Okay, thank you. Rachel, we can't hear you. Are you talking? Rachel, can you tell us your vote? Oh, I vote yes. Yep. Oh, there you go. Okay. Rachel, Blaine I'm sorry. My, for whatever reason, I'm coming in and out. I've okay. been on Zoom all day. So. so roll call your name and vote. Rachel Blaine. Yay. I vote okay. to uh, endorse. Support. Um, Tim, is it possible we can use the chat since it will appear on the video? So if Rachel pops in and out, we'll, if you have the chat window up on your screen. I just... I just went in, that's an, that's an option, but I just went in and unmuted everyone. And so then Rachel could. Oh, I see. Yep. Yeah. I don't know how she got muted, but she did. I couldn't now, hear as soon as John came on, I was done for some reason. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you're back. Your suggestion's wonderful. It's probably more, more than I'm up to as the host. <laughs> Um, so, all right, so that, that motion was carried unanimously. Um, so let's move on to, uh, thank, thank you vote. all. I'm going to bow out of the meeting. Yes. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank Stay you again. Safe.
Tim, I don't know if it's you, but the Zoom meeting screen keeps on showing up in front of the document. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I've got to click on it. Do okay. you see it all now? I see the yeah. whole document yeah, now. Okay. So I'm going to close this one and open another one. This one, I believe, let's see. I'm having trouble driving this thing. New share. There you go. Oh, okay. Royal Hill Cemetery. Now this one is scrollable, so okay. will, for the for the new participants. Well, do you have a copy of this, Trevor? I do not. No. Nope. Okay. That's okay. I can see it though. So I'll try and go. Um, yeah, it if you has pictures of representative headstones and. Yep. Chris. And just give me a rundown of what you guys are planning to do. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm going to put this page up. Okay. Turn it over to Chris for a five minute brief discussion. Okay. Yeah, basically this is, um, we talked about this on March 5th. Um, there's been 384 priority one and priority two historical gravestones assessed and identified for urgent repair in Laurel Hill Cemetery, which is the second oldest and the largest historical graveyard in the town. Um, and if anybody knows what we're talking about at Laurel Hill, this is all kind of down on the lower level and the hill near the lower level towards the railroad tracks up there on Pine Up Road. Okay. And so, um, so every single stone has been assessed page by page. There's a 388 page report out on it. And it's the work we think will come in in final bid at about $95,000. And we've secured, um, we're gonna match it between the Old Deerfield Cemetery Association, Deerfield Academy, Eagle Brook School, PVMA, historic Deerfield, private individuals, private company that's involved in historical preservation of gravestones, 50%, um, 47,500. And we've already secured 46,500 of that. Okay. Um, so we're almost done with it. Um, obviously, our reach out to, um, to descendant families um, and other champions of historic preservation has been kind of interrupted over the last <laughs> couple of weeks. It's not the yeah. last time to be asking them for money as the stock market plunges, but I, I yeah. see no reason that we'll be able to fill in the last less than a thousand dollars on this for matching. Yep. So yeah, I'm, I'm just showing a map of the cemetery. And what kind of, uh, what kind of, when you say restoration of the stones, is it, is it making new stones? Are they broken? What, are they slate? Like, what are, we, what are we talking the, about? Um, the, the majority of them are marble. There is okay. some slate in this cemetery, different than Albany Road, where there's sandstone. Yep. Um, and yep. so we're talking about repairs. There's broken stones. There's stones that are cracked. There's stones that have come off their foundation or are separating and ready to fall over. Yep. Um, so repairs first, stabilization, there'll be a, tons and tons of, of, of gra gravel that has to go in under some of the bigger monuments there. Yep. And then thorough cleaning okay. to, bring back, to bring back the historical epitaphs and artwork on them. Okay. So here are a couple of samples of... Thank you. Yep. This one, I think, is one of the examples of a broken stone and yep. tilted and so forth. Um, any other questions from the, those in attendance who aren't on the board? Um, this is Lily. I, I actually do have a, a question. And um, again, it's the same question that I asked before about um, are there, and, and I imagine this will come up in town meeting, uh, are, is there a maintenance plan being put together for this going forward, because it would be a shame to spend $90,000 just to have to do it again. Yeah, in fact, in fact, we, um, in the application, it, there's specific um, references to what has to be follow-up work over the coming years. And it's mainly an issue of inspection and cleaning. Inspection in case additional cracks develop, just because of freeze thaw and situations like that, so that you can then um, repair those localized defects. 
um, but the cleaning uh, can be done actually by trained volunteers down the road. We've learned that already based on past projects. Um, and the good thing is in terms of how funding has come in from people like PVMA and um, Eagle Brook is they provided funds for the next couple of years as part of their package. So purchasing the cleaning solution is the most expensive component of the maintenance. So, and plus we continue to tap into the resources that the old Deerfield Cemetery Association has. Obviously their endowment has taken a big hit in the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. but um, so, so the old Deerfield Cemetery Association has done a great job taking care of landscaping and tree maintenance and they intend to do the cleaning maintenance and to organize that also. Excellent. I do recall last time tree maintenance came up, somebody specifically brought that up, right? I think I remember for, it seems like the CPC does a lot of cemetery work. Um, <laughs> and, yes. and I recall somebody saying, yes, tree maintenance, is this something that the town so and these are all town responsibilities, right? Well, I think Bruce had talked about, uh, Bruce St. Peter's last uh, year had was going to request to have uh, CPA funds used to do tree maintenance. He f I think he did some research. He felt um, that it was a uh, possibility to do. Um, he did not bring that forward again this year. And just with our office staff, we did not have the time to to tackle a project like that this year just with the transition and staff we have and all the other things going on, we did not bring that forward. It may be something we'd bring forward next year with more staff to start doing tree maintenance because we're, we're worried that, you know, there are a lot of dead tree limbs and stuff above that when they fall in a bad storm can, can take out all the work we're going to be spending on, you know, doing this work. So, you know, if anyone interested in t picking up that ball <laughs> and going sure with it, you know, we, committee because it sounds like from the conversations Chris keeps bringing stuff forward putting together like old Deerfield um, types of organizations but is there a town committee? we do have uh, we do have uh, you know we have a tree warden in town and we have money that we put aside for trees every year a lot of times that money gets caught and um, cut in tight budget years um, and mostly that tree money is for road work you know uh ro tree trees on roads or trees on people's property that have to come down or trees that their roots go into the sewer system that kind of stuff so there's usually not a lot of money left over to go and do cemeteries and may i jump in quick sure yes, please so when bruce brought up the maintenance issue last year his concern was that we allocated money towards the i believe old deerfield congregational church with regards to steps and a walkway into there and he felt as though that was routine maintenance. That was where the question became, was whether it was routine maintenance or whether that was actually a true CPA fund request. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, his argument on town meeting. I don't think there was anything that I remember about care of cemeteries over a long-term maintenance issue. Yeah, no, I think he, he had brought one. To, so he brought it to us last year, but it was like a week before town meeting or the you know, it was too late to do it last year about tree maintenance, but I think that's kind of just where it, where it lied. I, I, I could be wrong about that, but I, that's what I remember Wendy talking about. Yeah, he, he actually approached the CPC to try and put forward a project based on tr trimming trees that were overhanging historic um, stones that had been preserved in the past. And we said, it's after the deadline, too much after the deadline, and um, we couldn't get it onto the, the warrant. So yep. didn't didn't make it this year, even though I did right. reach out to him. Yeah. Uh, All right, so. thank you. I was just wondering about that because I knew it had been an issue. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, we, it'll probably get brought up again this year at town meeting when we go to talk about this for sure. And, um, and right now, Albany Road Cemetery, the trees are being maintained by Deerfield Academy, mainly. Okay. And at Laurel Hill Cemetery it is the old Deerfield Cemetery Association. They've spent 38000 or $32,000 in treatment maintenance over the last 10 years. Okay. 
All right. So, so um, we'll have to tackle that next year, hopefully, if there's any money left. Mm -hmm. um, so are, are there any other questions or comments from anyone? No. Um, that being the case, I would entertain a motion regarding this application. I, Lily Dwight, move that we approve or recommend this motion to take the meeting. A, a second. second. Rachel, Rachel Blaine, Blaine, I second. Okay. Um, motion's been moved and seconded. And um, I, Tim Hilchey, CPC chairman, approve the motion. I, Lee White, vote yay. I, Rachel Blaine, vote yay. I, Ben Rachel Benson, Shannon, vote, vote yay. yay. Alan Sweedland votes yay. Charles? Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Hi, I, Charles Shattuck, uh, vote yay. <clears throat> that uh, is a unanimous vote. Um, so now we'll move on to um, the final item on the agenda tonight. Um, I'm going to start a new share and uh, see if I can. Hmm. There we go. Can everyone see that? Oh, yeah. no, that's, sorry, that's the wrong thing. <laughs> Learning how to drive. You can see it though. <laughs> Looks like it's right above there, Tim. CPA rec application. Yeah, it is. I'm just trying to get my new share. The tools pop in and out of uh, visibility. So here we go. There we are. So, um, I'll Can you enlarge that at all. I'll Tim. try to. That's helpful. It, Thank you. Is it getting bigger? Yeah. That's that's pretty good for me. Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to turn it over to um, Chief Pachor. Hi, everybody. So thanks for the invitation, Tim, and uh, everybody on the committee. I think a lot of people know that the town of Deerfield for a long time has struggled with a town park and uh, playing fields in town. A lot of our sports activities are going to out of town. We're going to Hurley Heat Park or we're going to Sunderland. Um, so the look has always been there for, for many, many years. I even sent out a study from 1979 that recommended that we uh, create additional parklands, fields for recreational activities. Um, so it, it's been constantly on my list just as a general resident but also with my own kids doing athletics and knowing they built the elementary school in 1992 and we really lost our only town park. Many people will remember Dwyer's lot where the elementary school was. We had a pavilion there. We used to do July 4th there. We did many barbecues throughout the year. The fire department used to do an ice skating rink in there. They used to bring uh, zoo animals in for July 4th. People used to ride elephants and they had giraffes there. So, it really brought the town together uh, multiple times a year. And even on my hit list well beyond this project was bringing the fireworks back on Sugarloaf Mountain. Mm -hmm. We used to be able to see the fireworks from Deerfield for 30 to 40 miles. People in Hoyoke used to watch them off of Sugarloaf Mountain. So Deerfield uh, used to have several events a year and I've been constantly looking. And I've been working with a couple developers in the area. I've been looking at a couple different pieces of property. I've researched over the past three years, multiple different areas. And one of the areas I've been watching constantly is this property on North Main Street. And it's been on the market about 670 days, I think at this point, roughly. And I've been talking to the select board probably since April or May last year mm -hmm. about this property, going back and forth with their questions, with town council's questions. And we did it kind of behind the scenes very quietly. So as other interested parties uh, to purchase the property may not jump on it with a little bit higher of uh, an offer and supersede us. So I tried to keep it as quiet as possible, even though there was a, a few people that knew that we were working on it behind the scenes. So we did bring in a wetlands engineer. We brought in um, an appraiser due to CPA funds. We do need a certified appraisal. 
Um, and that was the crux of my late application. And I apologize, I submitted it literally on the last day that applications were due in March because I've literally been working on this day for day for day. Yep. Tormenting contractors, tormenting the appraiser, just trying to get things lined up to see if we can make it happen. Because if we wait another year, I think the possibilities of us acquiring this land are pretty limited at best because there are several other people that have been going back and forth with negotiations and offers. Very rarely do we get a parcel that's on North Main Street, that's flat, that's right, almost adjacent to Frontier, almost adjacent to Deerfield Elementary. There is one property in between. I don't know if you wanna scroll down to the map, Tim, so people can kind of take a peek as we go. But the property came back with an appraised value of 272,000 and you see the properties in the blue uh, area over there. It's got two fields on it. It's got a parking lot. It's got 68 feet of frontage that comes right out to North Main Street. That's not a right away. It's actual frontage. So it would be owned by the town if we go ahead and purchase the property. Six and that's the lighter. That's the lighter color in the map. Yes. You'll see those two strips. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> that's the side we're talking about. So if you look at that from, uh, from an operational perspective with regards to a driveway, 68 feet wide would give us two 10 foot travel lanes, eight foot bike lanes on both sides of the road, six or eight foot sidewalks, a picket fence on the way in, and literally still have a little spare room for some uh, shrubs on the side to really jazz it up and look amazing. And one of the things that we looked at doing was in building a town park here was starting initially with a couple soccer fields because we're busing kids to Hurley Heat Park and to uh, Sunderland Elementary School as well as behind the, the town hall on School Street. So every time a bus shows up at Frontier, it's costing Darius and Frontier Regional School District $160 per bus. So each day is costing Frontier about $320 plus just for busing alone. So Darius, the superintendent of Frontier Regional School District has said off camera, you buy it, the town build it, we will maintain it. So it would be an amazing partnership with Frontier to have fields directly adjacent to the elementary school and the high school as well, where teammates could flow back and forth to, uh, to whatever activities they needed to. We're looking at putting a possible concession stand out there eventually with bathrooms and one of the other things we were looking at putting out there was a band shelf. And I really, I wanted to capitalize on the projects uh, that we've done in the common with the concerts on the common. And I wanted to push it up there more or less uh, like out in Lenox when you go to Tanglewood and there's a band shell out there. I would really like to see three to 500 Deerfield residents sitting on the lawn at a band shell in Deerfield socializing while their kids or even other people are walking around a walking path or the fields playing and having an amazing Friday or Saturday night. I think it would really bring the community together. So mm -hmm. one of the things in research in this was our assistant or our interim town administrator, Diana Schindler, had worked this in Southampton before and she told me that there's a $500,000 grant available per year to communities. So you'll, you'll see that in the notes on there that my hope is that we can actually get that $500,000 grant and either build this entire thing in one or two phases. Um, but in researching the grant in the last week, I did realize the state has decreased it to 400,000. So that, I guess you could call a typo or just, um, I don't wanna mislead you at all. That grant up there that says 500,000 has been reduced to the state to $400,000. And communities are eligible for each and every year. It does fall under the Climate and Energy Bureau. So the person that we've been working with at the Climate and Energy Bureau, the secretary that's in charge of that entire division of state government uh, was born in Conway. Katie Climate. Carolyn, Carolyn Ness works with her all the time on the Municipal Vulnerability Grant Program. <clears throat> uh, so I, I think that we would have reasonable grounds to apply and possibly get up to $400,000 a year really in phase one of this, I'm looking to purchase this property, get at least one field on it, see where we can position the band shell. And then I'm also looking, I have an email into the adjacent property, which is owned by Charles Mark. Charles Mark is uh, about 96 years old. 
He's an John. amazing gentleman. John. Yep. John. John, this is Lily. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I want to go back to that grant. Sure. I, I would like to understand something. What are the requirements for procuring that grant? We would have to go through the application process. We would have to at least have an open space plan on file or be working on one. And then we do have to file with them with all the uh, projected costs and estimates. So we would have to get an engineer on board relatively quick after town meeting. So we need to have the land and we need to have the engineering study. Does that sound right? Those would be the minimum requirements? Yes, I think that would be the minimum, yes. Okay. Thank you. That's I'm just trying to understand. We, we do have an open space plan on file. Excellent. Yeah. And it was done, uh, I would say, three or four years ago by the Open Space Committee. I love it. I do have a copy of that. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Yeah. So I think overall, the goal was to appropriate all the funds up front. And you see that in the budget line, that the land itself is about 272000 The engineering costs, I'm told, are going to be anywhere from 50 to 75. I was told to use 75 as just a decent high number. And then when you go up from there, I was told by the, uh, the people that install band shells for communities across the Commonwealth that those band shells run about $150,000 to $200,000 installed. And you, you keep going through the budget. And John Cocott gave me rough uh, numbers with prevailing wage to go ahead and install two fields on that property. And those numbers, I think, are on the second to last page. I think I highlighted yeah, that's what I'm trying to scroll to. It's just the computer takes over. No, you're all right. You're fine, Tim. So John Coca did give me those estimates with prevailing wage. And I think he was, uh, you know, around $400,000 to go in there, put in a road, put in the sidewalks, five street lamps on the way in of the, uh, the road. The road would be paved all the way up to the dirt parking lot. We do want to leave uh, the permeable surface for drainage. Um, there is some, uh, some wet areas out there. That's why we did have to bring in a wetlands engineer. Um, so there's all John's numbers on the screen in front of you. So you see really phase one, what I would call phase one is the $453,000 rough estimate. Phase two, what I would call is 131 North Main Street. That's uh, Charles Marx's property. That's if we go ahead and acquire the additional parcel between this parcel and Frontier, which is an absolute priority for me. I think that this property is amazing, but I think it's uh, even more so if we can tie it directly to Frontier and allow Deerfield Elementary and Frontier Kids to walk back and forth and be off of North Main Street. Mm -hmm. So with that said, we can focus on that for next year on the $400,000 grant again. The goal this year is to appropriate the money, acquire the property, get the engineer on board, apply for the $400,000 grant, and then try, the grant usually is awarded around July or August, put it out to bid, hopefully in mid-August, see what we get in this market. This may be a perfect market to put something out to bid mm -hmm. and get a decent price on it with a $400,000 grant. And you see right in my notes way up above, I apologize, it's a 30 page packet. My goal would ultimately be try, trying to push four to $500,000 back to CPC for allocation towards another project in the future. So, and I'm more than happy to, uh, to answer any and everything you got for me. So just um, a couple of quick questions. Um, the idea is that you hope that Mr. Marks would, or Mr. Mark would uh, donate the land or we might have to acquire it. Yes. But um, it seems to me that um, by acquiring the parcel you're looking for in this round, it would sort of isolate the land between the school and the town owned parkland and it might end up being the only real use of the land. Absolutely. Yep, but you still and, have sidewalk access. And you, you mentioned that you've started to speak with him or his representatives. Is that in the early stages? Yes. Yeah, Charles Marks is in the very early stages. I, I sent his daughter uh, an email and inquired if I could stop by and see him and discuss a, a town park project in the area. And that just happened a couple of days ago. I was waiting for an additional document for Tom Johnson, um, the engineer that's uh, kind of been doing this for free for the town to supply me with an additional drawing, putting the band shell onto the property. And I don't know if I sent you that email, Tim or not. 
No, that's okay. No, I didn't receive it, but. Yep. So before I met with Charles, I really wanted to be able to show him the band shell and how it would interact with the property. Um, okay. John, what is the, does your proposal include purchasing the house? No, the house no. is a separate parcel out front of yep. Charles's place. It yep. is already parceled out. Okay. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. In the land chart. Charles's land out back, that additional 7.5 acres, I think the towns appraised it, you know, they're taxing them at about 31,000 because technically it's a non-buildable lot. It's a non-conforming lot. Right. Um, this is Trevor. I, um, I just want to piggyback on to John. We, um, John presented this to the select board, the joint select board finance committee and capital improvement planning committee this week, um, just to get everybody up to up to speed. John's been working hard on this and, and it literally is all coming together. We've been kind of pushing back at John for a lot of questions over the last um, half a year. Um, and then uh, and then a lot lately as we're trying to put budgets together and figure out what we're going to do. Um, you know, all of that stuff kind of came together this week. We had the presentation with all three boards, um, all three boards. I think nobody took a vote on it. I think other than uh, a verbal kind of that we're, I know the select board is all in favor of this and uh, cause we're obviously our, our name is on the application too, but um, I know that the, the general um, feeling in the room was everybody's very excited about this project from finance committee, capital improvement planning committee and select board. So, and recreation. So, I mean, we got pretty good buy-in and, and, um, so, and that's it's fairly rare. <laughs> I don't know if you've been in town politics at all, but um, but we've uh, John's done a good job putting this stuff together, so we're really excited about it. John, um, question for you: This screen that I have on the the share, sure. There's a lot with, which is the one that we currently or have an offer in on. Yes. And then there's something called subject. Is that the same piece of land? Uh, yeah, is that, that is the same exact property. Okay. Yep. I just wanted to understand that image. Now I'm going to go up to the um, higher up. You. So this is Lily. Um, as you're doing that, Tim, um, this comes to the question that I wanted to ask, which is, does it make more sense to provide the money for the purchase of this property and the engineering study and to come back for the money for the um, implementation once you have the engineering study and possibly the second piece of property. Does it make sense to break this up? I question the same thing, Lily. And the, the, uh, the people I spoke to across town were so excited about it. They did not want to see it divided into two yeah. years. They literally wanted to see one project. They wanted to see it on the screen in front of them. And they literally wanted to move on it today. They wanted to know yeah. when town meeting was. Because yep. the town of Deerfield very rarely takes on projects like this. You start talking to the people about fields and band shells, they are literally up in arms. They were that excited. Was and the mainly the, of, yeah, so go the ahead. second part of it is really when we build it, and it's going to take four or five months to build, we know that. But we also know that even when we plant grass there, we don't want teams playing on it or people on it for a year. Okay. So if, if, yeah, if, if we wait till the following year to... Uh, acquire money for the build out of it and we do it the following fall now we're set back again that's so, three. Yeah. Yeah. And the goal is really to get that phase one moving and then really phase two is to focus on charles marx's property and continue to march right through and my hope is that i can literally go meet with him in the next few days so so um let me ask this what if it were to the, to be structured in such a way that you're coming for the money to do everything for the land that is for sale and that the second phase is this other property and that we have a special town meeting because we have those all the mm -hmm. time now. Yeah, I think we always get pushback from myself, the finance committee and the select board. Anytime we do a special town meeting, the town goes up in arms. And when you're talking about acquiring property at a special town meeting, they literally, even the, mm. the buyback, we know it, it was a great thing to buy that property back and control it from Oxford Pickle in New England Natural Bakers. If you really followed it tight, you know it was a good move, but the people in the community were yipping behind the scenes constantly. Mm. So it needs to be it. you can put on yeah. annual town meeting and keep it wide open in front of three to 400 people versus 30 people in the fall, 
That's, that's always my goal because it always appears you're not sneaking anything. You literally roll it out and say, here it is. You are not hiding anything from you. It's very apparent and, and people like it. They respect it. If, if I can just jump in for, for a minute, folks, uh, Alan, uh, I, I was leaning in the same direction that uh, I hear Lily uh, expressing when I first heard about this, John, but I also, um, in, think, in hearing what Trevor is saying, that if we really do have um, the select board, uh, finance and uh, capital improvement, um, recreation all on board, um, I can see the value in what, what you're saying. And, and if we have that strong a support by the town officials <clears throat> at the town meeting, I think that improves our odds quite a lot in terms mm -hmm. of uh, in terms of voting this uh, as a whole piece, because that's the big challenge is is to really have the finance committee or or um, the select board or whoever saying, you know, this is something really incredible opportunity for the town. And the other thing too that we have to keep in mind is that this funding only really gets done when the invoices for mm -hmm. the work gets done. So there are there are steps in the process where the, even though the money is approved at town meeting, how that right. money gets spent over the time um, really gives us some opportunities if something tends, we take, tend to get a snafu somewhere. So yes. I'm yep. kind of leaning now, I have to say, and hearing you, uh, the chief and and Trevor, I'm I'm kind of coming around to thinking that this is something we should maybe consider going uh, all the way on. Yeah, I hate to see this, is Trevor. I hate to see you know so much of this town. You know, we get started on something and it never gets completed. Studies or whatever, it just takes so long to get something going. We take a church over with the intentions of senior center and. You know, it's just something, ha I think here we have a solid, clear plan with a lot of buy-in and I think we can roll right along and with the rates the way they are gonna be, I think, you know, if we can get something approved and get people working and get a project going at a really low interest rate and, um, you know, even just as we as we finance the project, uh, even though we have, you know, money sitting there, it's just it just makes sense to kind of roll right along with it. And, get, and, and as John said, get that thing seated and, and, you know, get it playing, you know, as early as we can. Well, it's clearly, this is what the CPC is for. Yep. And yes. And I see that it's not a cemetery. I'm sorry, Chris. I, the cemeteries are great. <laughs> <but> it, <laughs> no so one's playing soccer. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, one of my questions that I'm, and I'm basing this on what happened, looking at what happened in the town meeting about the sewer. Mm -hmm. And so who is going to manage this? Do you guys have a good answer for that question? Because you know, it's coming. I think it would ultimately be a partnership between the recreation commission, the select board and Darius, the superintendent of frontier regional. I think we would establish an MOU where they would go ahead and use it and maintain it. And, but we would ultimately put together a working group that would oversee it. Yeah. We probably have a committee to do that. I know we're, we're pulling on a new assistant town administrator, hopefully this week. Um, you know, she'll, she'll be able to kind of free up Casey a bit to hammer on some other things. So any of these kind of separate projects, I think she'll be able to get pretty involved with. And like, like John said, there'll be a committee of all of us kind of together, a joint committee, a building committee probably on this. Okay. Um... I, I, do I hear you volunteering? <laughs> this also has a, this has potential for um you know future celebration of the 2020 um, 50th the 350th yeah exactly. yes absolutely uh, and i would want to know a little bit more from the high school there will be there'll be more um you know um concern about how much dominion the high school has over this playing field you know of when course. the the town and the high school come into time conflicts. Yep, we, we can straighten all that out for sure, no doubt. So yeah, because Deerfield is going to have a, a soccer, a men's and women's soccer league and a co-ed soccer league, and they're going to have to have equal access to this that the students. Yep, 
I'm being facetious a little bit, but I'm just, you know. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, no, we, we're building it for the town. A lot of the kids are the ones that are playing it. But, yeah, we would. Oh, we, yeah. Could, we could work out a schedule for sure. And Absolutely. I'm going to get a senior softball league going. Just That's saying. right. That sounds good. <laughs> That'd be great. Oh. One of the things the Recreation Commission also asked for was the possibility of putting a walking path around yes. the entire exterior of it. Uh, you know, I did get questions by a couple residents about the mosquitoes, and I mm -hmm. referred them over to Carolyn. But <laughs> yep. that, uh, that was a joke. But no, I did. Uh, I did tell them that you know there are fields adjacent to Frontier anyway. So if there are mosquito issues, we need to address them to begin with. Right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. That's already on our radar. Mm -hmm. So when you referred them to uh, Carolyn, did that tick them off? <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, that's good. That's so, good, Tim. <laughs> sorry, I know I'm. Oh, that was great. That was good. We all need a little humor in these days. Mm. <laughs> yes. Right. So, what other questions do we have? I think none. That I, I would just piggyback on what Rachel said that to anticipate what's going to happen in town meeting. Right? They're going to ask who's going to manage the project. Yep. They're going to ask. Um, do we have to do this all at once? And I think you got the answer. Yep. But yep. the other thing is, like, if Frontier is maintaining it, does that mean that I can't be out there with my granddaughter? Right. Because, you know, so what is the balance yep. going to be, um, and how do we strike that? And they're going to be asking those questions. Yeah, it's good. Those are great questions. We'll, we'll get answers to all that. Yeah. And I, I think, think the, the goal, Lily, is ultimately to put those two or three fields out there with a band shell. So it's not only just so two or three teams can practice at once, but it is to go ahead in what we call cycle fields. Because even Rachel knows at Eagle Brook, fields can get decimated in one rainy season. And literally, you have to put them out of service for two, three, four months and rehabilitate those fields and transfer the players onto a different field. So it does help to have two or three fields to go ahead and cycle them through. And when times are healthy, you literally can have two, three, four teams out there practicing simultaneously. So um, on this on this image, I I know it's this is just a drawing. Um, where where were we anticipating that a band shell might be logically placed? Uh, you see, um, on Charles Marx's property, right along the edge of the road where the field comes up, there's a, a soccer field. Yep, right up in mm -hmm. there. Yep, I can email it to you, Tim. Quick, if you want to put it on the. No, side. that's okay. That's up to you. But uh, Tom did insert it right there for me because I wanted it as my selling point to Charles Mark when I met with him. I wanted it on his property specifically when I met so with he, him. So then he flipped, the, flipped that field kind of lengthways. Yes. Um, a lot like the, the little smaller one down there and that left room up near the driveway for the van shell. Okay. And so um, if, if we don't get this parcel, this, this particular back and forth between the school, is that, is that an easement or it, is it doesn't exist? It, does it doesn't not exist. exist. Right now okay. we would have to, yeah, we'd have to look at other options. We would either have yep. to make a fair market estimate or other means of acquiring the property. And yep. this, this right here, um, is this just a, an that's access? That's the railroad. Route? Sorry? That is the railroad. That railroad, that's what I thought. The railroad, yep. yeah. So we don't want kids walking on that. No. no, and people have often asked me when I run this by them in town, they said, hey, how about using Channing LB? The logistical issue with Channing LB is, number one, the fields over there were never built for athletic fields. So there's generally an inch of water on them, number one. And number two is you're always dealing with a road or a railroad track issue, and you can't yeah. have kids walk across the tracks. Okay. Well, does anyone else have any other comments they want to – bring up i mean i'm i'm not going to say where i'm leaning i i, I want to just make sure that the discussion has been robust enough for everyone mm -hmm. this is chuck just to follow up to the question on where the uh the band shell would go so i know it's uh it sounds like it would be contingent on whether or not we acquire the second parcel if we don't is yep. there a plan b to still put a, a band shell on the property we you know assuming we're able to acquire the first property I would like to put it on property number one, but I do want it on his drawings, on his map. So when I meet with him, I think it's something that he would totally buy into. But I think for me, it's a total priority to make sure that it goes in phase one because the townspeople are extremely 
excited. When you mentioned taking concerts on the common to a band shell in a private lot where it's like uh, Tanglewood and Lennox, they are beyond excited. Right. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else? I'm thinking more energy park in Greenfield, but it's still great. Uh, don't give me a <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> nobody's, nobody's mentioning the Turner's band shell. Which that Wait. looks like that one that you're showing uh, in the proposal is, is uh, the same one as Turner's Falls, or at least a uh, pretty close, right? Yeah. yeah. Can anyone see my can anyone see my screen at all? I was just trying to flip my camera around. We can see your thumb. Well, you can. <laughs> what about now? Can you see the yep. paper at all? You've got your um your fake background growing, Trevor. Oh, uh, I guess not. Sorry. I was hoping to show you the, the thing in the plan, but I guess not. Yeah, I mean I can email it once yeah. if I do have it out of this full screen. Yeah. No, that's I'm okay. Com I'm comfortable with um where we've gone with the conversation this evening. Okay. Just as one person. Yep. Okay, one last call for anybody who wants to raise another issue and then I'm gonna move to have a motion presented. Hearing none, I would entertain a motion about this project. I, Lily Dwight, move that we recommend this project to town meeting. I have a second. Chuck Shattuck, I second the motion. Motion has been moved and seconded. Um, all in favor, uh, Tim Hilchey, Chairman, I am in favor. Alan Swedland, I'm in favor. Billy Rachel Blaine. Rachel. Rachel Blaine, in favor. Lily. Lily Dwight, in favor. Chuck Shattuck in favor. And Dan in favor. Oh. Um, it's unanimous. Wonderful. All right. That's amazing. Thank you so much. So, Thank you, guys. Um, before I let you guys go, I just want to say a couple of things. I want to th thank Lily for being the technical advisor and making this possible. <laughs> she's yeah. amazing. I know amazing. she didn't write Zoom, but she's <laughs> the one that helped get this working properly. And I also want to thank the chief for all the work you put into this. It's obviously yep. uh, uh, something that's dear to his heart. And I'm sure yep. that the town will, uh, if we are able to bring this to fruition, the town will have a great many years of enjoyment out of it. So, yep. Yeah, no, please. Anybody that knows thank me, you. it's all about the town. It's not about me. It's all yep. about bringing people together. Thank yep. you. So um, if there's nothing else for either Chris, well, did Chris leave? I think Chris left. Yeah, Chris Harris. No, um, still on. Oh, okay. oh, still on. Okay, great. Um, so I was just going to say that um, we have some business to take care of, like dealing with minutes and stuff. So uh, okay. I'm happy to release Trevor and great. John and Chris, if that's okay. All yeah, right. Jump me off. Thanks. Thank, thank you guys right, so guys. much. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, very much. Stay, thank you. Stay, stay, stay uh, apart from each other. Take care. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. How do I get out of this thing? Leave me <laughs> There is that question. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, where, where's the leave meeting? Where did it go? It be in the lower right corner. Should yeah, be usually there. lower right. Uh, yeah, yeah, if you run your cursor there. over it, you, it should pop up in even red. Got it. Thank you. All right, good night. Bye. Thank you. All right, so it's just, just us chickens. <laughs> Um, oh, we lost Rachel, but um, so did everyone before, did everyone get um, the, I sent the minutes and then Rachel sent some minutes and then I sent a bunch of minutes all in one package. Uh, um, because, package, yep. I got them. So uh, have we been able to look at them? Do you want me to call them up on the screen? I, I went through them, went through Rachel's just before and during the time we've been on. Okay. In I Rachel's, I just corrected the spelling of one name. Yeah. Okay. I was only for one of the meetings, but I'm, I've been through, actually, I went through both. But. Okay. Um, did anyone see anything that needs to be corrected? 
Oh, I think we could approve them uh, as they stand for personally. Okay, so shall we do this one by one, starting with the 2019? You have to move it and all that kind of stuff? Yes. I move that we approve the minutes for the um, 20 December. Yeah. December of 2019. December, December 4th. December 4th, 2019. Thank you. Because I'm second. not looking at it. Like, me. I second. Okay. Motions made and seconded to approve the minutes <laughs> as written. Um, Tim Hilchey approves. Rachel Blaine, approve. Alan approves. Ben approves. Lily approves. Rick Shattuck abstain. I don't. I think that was one I didn't attend. I think that's one you weren't there yet. Okay. Um, now we'll move on to the February 20, 2020. Do I have a motion? I move that we accept the meetings of February 20, 2020. I second, I Lily second it. Uh, all in favor? Tim Hilchey approves. Lily Dwight approves. Alan Swainland approves. Ben Benson approves. <laughs> Chuck. Okay. Um, did Rachel, did you, did you approve? I uh, I approve. Rachel Blaine approve. Okay. And Chuck, you're muted. Chuck, He's muted. You need yes, to I approve. Uh, can you hear me now? I'm sorry. Yep. Yep. All right, All right. Chuck Shattuck approve. All right. And the last bit. Um, now we'll move on to the minutes of March 5, 2020. To have a motion. I move that we approve the minutes of March 2nd. March widget is it? Fifth. Fifth, okay. yes, March fifth. Second. Chuck Shattuck will second. All right. All those in favor of the motion, um, Tim Hilchey approves. I Lily abstain. I wasn't there. Alan Sweetland approves. Chuck Shattuck approves. Ben Benson approves. Rachel's frozen. Oh. And Rachel was not there. Rachel's coming back. She just, she's got a, a bit of an internet connection issue. Yep. Tim, you want to unmute her? I am just trying to. Okay. All right, there you go, Rachel. Chuck, you're muted again. Lily's muted. I muted myself, so I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. All right. So um, is there any other business we need to take up? I think we're good. We are. All right. Um, it's um, 729. Uh, motion to dis adjourn would be in order. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. I second that we adjourn. All in favor? <laughs> Tim Hilty, yes. Let's adjourn. Chuck Shattuck, yes. Lily Dwight, yes. Alan, yes. And Benson, yes. Rachel Blaine, yes. All right. Can I just ask Lily to hang on for one minute? And the rest of you, thank you so much. Well, thank both Bye. of you. Thank all you very much. Yeah. I'll turn up the recording. Right. Well, thank you both. All, all right. Be well. Bye.